G'day, g'day guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. I do hope you enjoyed today's bloody good stories, and with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prod to the barbie, let's get right into it. Cheers. Posted by user, Foreign Ostrich 8937 titled, Am I the asshole for asking my husband to cancel his bros only trip to help me with our newborn after he promised he would help? So this situation's caused a lot of tension between my husband and I and now I'm questioning whether I'm being unreasonable. I, 30 female, gave birth to our first child, Olivia, two months ago. Being a first-time mum has been both beautiful and overwhelming. My husband, Jake, 32 male, was incredibly supportive during the pregnancy and promised me that after Olivia was born, he would be there for me every step of the way, especially during those challenging first few months. Before Olivia was born, Jake and his friends had been planning a bros-only trip for this summer, a week-long vacation to a cabin in the mountains for hiking, fishing, and bonding. When the trip was being discussed, I reminded Jake that Olivia would only be a few months old, and we would be deep in the newborn phase. He assured me that if things got too tough, he would cancel the trip to help me out, and I trusted him. Now that Olivia is here, things have been harder than I anticipated. Between the sleepless nights, breastfeeding struggles, and just trying to adjust to motherhood, I've been feeling overwhelmed. Jake has been helpful, but I can tell that he's excited about this trip, which is coming up next month. Last week, I asked Jake if he could consider cancelling the trip, reminding him of his promise. I told him that I'm struggling, and that having him gone for a whole week would be really tough on me. He seemed surprised and a bit hurt that I was asking him to cancel. He said he's been looking forward to this trip for months and that he needs a break too. He also pointed out that his parents live nearby and could help if I needed support while he was away. I understand that Jake needs a break and wants to spend time with his friends, but I can't help feeling like this is a time when I really need him by my side. I tried to explain that while I appreciate his parents' help, it's not the same as having him here. Jake said that I'm being unfair by asking him to cancel the trip after all the planning that went into it and that I need to trust him to make sure I'm supported even if he's not physically there. Now, we're at a bit of a standoff. Some of my friends think that I should let him go, saying that it's important for him to have some time away, especially after all the stress of becoming a new dad. But others agree that it's too soon for him to take off for a week and that he should prioritize being home with me and Olivia. So, am I the asshole for asking my husband to cancel his bros only trip to help me with our newborn after he promised that he would? In the comments, Fancy and Fab says, You were uncomfortable for nine months, you went through labor, you were now breastfeeding, what the hell does he need a break from? He was a giant asshole when he planned this trip, he was a bigger asshole when he lied about cancelling, and he's the giant, gaping, insanely awful asshole now that he thinks that it's unreasonable for you to not want him to be gone for an entire week when you're already overwhelmed. It doesn't seem like you'd want his parents to stay for that week while he's gone. This made me furious. I hope that this is his only misstep, though I doubt it. Not the asshole. He needs her to trust him. Like how she trusted him months before when he said that he wouldn't go if she needed him. Yeah, that worked out so well in the trust department. OP, I am mad on your behalf. He needs a break too? Like, the two is insinuating somehow that you got a break. When did that happen? Seriously, shouldn't she be getting a break first? This guy's lame as hell. Not the asshole. He agreed he would cancel it, until he was actually held to his word, planning a trip with his friends a few months after your due date was truly, spectacularly poor judgement in the first place. He's a dad now, he's not your helper, he should be pulling his own weight, and he should know by now that this is a bad idea. No, his parents living nearby does not make up for it, and no, it is not reasonable for him to expect you to trust him to make sure that you're supported even though he's not physically there. This is his baby, he should be physically there, not just supporting you but taking care of his own child, who I must assume that you are still recovering from carrying and giving birth to. You are not being unfair, he is being a liar. What do we call people who say they'll do something and then pitch a fit when you expect them to actually do it? 
I assume that Jake will be looking after Olivia for a week once you've stopped breastfeeding and can go away for a break. Let Jake know that if he uses his parents' free childcare, it will result in a further week of rest being required. Jake seems oblivious to the struggles that you are facing with your child and selfishly prioritizes his own needs over you and Olivia. I can see where people are coming from, telling OP that if he gets a week off, you should get a week off, but I feel like at this point in time, that's besides the point. There was a boundary that was established prior to this, knowing that this was a very iffy uh, boys trip to begin with and that there was a chance that OP you know, enforced the boundary, being like, I'm not comfortable with you going there, you already agreed to this boundary, that was proper communication between us. I think it's unrealistic and kind of gross that Jake sees OP trying to enforce this boundary, being like, this is a deal breaker, please don't do this, this is what you agreed on, and him being like, oh come on man, it's not gonna be that bad, it's just a week, I can see that you're struggling, but let me have my time off man, come on. Unfortunately, Jake, that's not how relationships work. If you want to lose your relationship, go ahead. But if you agreed to something beforehand, and then you renege, you're doing some serious damage to the trust department. I don't think you're an asshole at all for reinforcing your boundary, OP, and I think he's a big dickhead for not changing his mind after the initial, hey, um, can you rethink this? Back up to the post, there is an edit. Hey, everyone. I just wanted to give a quick update after reading through most of the replies. I was honestly overwhelmed by the amount of support and understanding I received. Thank you so much to everyone who took the time to respond. Your kind words and thoughtful advice really helped me feel less alone in this situation. A lot of you suggested that I should also take a week off, letting Jake stay with Olivia to get a break for myself. I really appreciate the sentiment behind that suggestion, but there are a couple of reasons why it's not realistic for me right now. First of all, I'm breastfeeding, so being away from Olivia for that long would be really difficult logistically. But beyond that, and this is something that I know I need to work on, I just don't feel comfortable being away from my baby yet. I know it's not healthy to feel like I can't have her out of my sight, but I can't help it. I guess it's just that new mum anxiety that's really hard to shake. I've been debating whether or not to show Jake this thread. I'm worried that reading it might hurt his feelings, but I'm definitely going to have another conversation with him about everything. I'm willing to compromise and let him go on the trip, but I think a whole week is just too much. I'm leaning towards suggesting that he limit the trip to a maximum of three nights, so he can still have some time away with his friends, but not be gone for an entire week. I'll update again after we've talked. Thanks again for all the support everyone, it really means a lot to me. That's fair enough. I think coming to a compromise and coming to a reasonable solution, if you're happy with three days together, that's understandable. And now, on to the updates. Hey everyone, I just wanted to share another update after having a very long and emotional talk with Jake. I won't get into every detail of our conversation, but I'll touch on the most important points. After putting Olivia to bed, I went straight to bed myself, feeling utterly exhausted. Jake was already asleep, but for some reason, the weight of everything just hit me all at once, and I started crying uncontrollably. My sobbing woke Jake up, and he immediately asked me what was wrong. I told him that I was just tired, but then I opened up about how anxious I'd been feeling about his trip and being left alone with Olivia. I admitted something that I'd been reluctant to say out loud, that Jake hasn't been as involved as I thought he would be, this was one of my biggest fears when we found out that we were having a baby. For context, Jake has a rocky relationship with his own dad. I won't go into detail about why his dad isn't the best, but his mum, my mother-in-law, remarried when Jake was in middle school, and his dad wasn't very present in his life. Jake has expressed to me before that becoming a father was scary for him because he's afraid of being a bad one, just like his dad. When he first told me that, I thought it would make him into a great father, because it showed how much he cared about being a good dad long before we were even pregnant. When I vented to him about all of this, at first he tried to defend himself. He admitted that he's been freaking out about having a baby for so long and just didn't want to tell me. He said he didn't want to stress me out while I was pregnant because he knows how much I've always wanted to be a mother. Hearing him say that made me feel guilty, like I hadn't seen how much he's been struggling internally. 
I tried to convince him that he was going to be a great dad when we had this conversation long ago, and now it all felt more complicated. I thought to myself, this can't go on much longer. I realized that if he was going to keep pulling away like this, I didn't know if I could handle it. So I asked him, is this what our life is going to look like from now on? Me with Olivia and you away? Because if it is Jake, then I don't think I can continue on like this. Jake told me to calm down and assured me that he wasn't going anywhere, and then he got really emotional. He even started to tear up. He said he didn't want to turn into his dad and that he hadn't realized that going on this trip could be a preliminary step towards becoming the absentee father that he feared he might be. He apologized for not considering me and Olivia as much as he should have. Long story short, Jake called his friends and told them that he wouldn't be able to make the trip. He's even started planning a little family getaway for the three of us next year when Olivia is a bit older. It was a tough conversation, but I feel like we're on the same page now, and I'm hopeful that things will get better from here. Thanks again to everyone for your support and advice. It's been an emotional roller coaster, but I'm grateful for this community helping me navigate it. In the comments, JonesBrianna77 says, My hubby's boss tried to plan a week-long trip while I was a week postpartum. Hubby looks at his boss and says, I'm not leaving my wife alone with a colic reflux baby for a week. I'd rather do the two-hour drive back and forth. His boss kind of just huffed and cancelled the plans. If I were OP's husband's friends, I would be hard judging him for trying to come along with us on the trip. I would lose respect. Me too. Certain actions and choices change your opinion in a moment, and it's very hard to change them back. Dad should never get a boys trip unless mum gets a break first. And a week away is too long. Two nights max. Dude needs to grow up. I always hate when dads to newborns and babies say that they need a break and want to plan a getaway like they're still single and childless. Dude, you have responsibilities that you can't just put on a shelf in the closet. Well, not without CPS getting involved. That week with the boys needs to wait. Until he does some serious work on his issues, this isn't the happy ending that everyone thinks it is. Having one night where he realizes he's being an ass and cancels a trip is not the same as being a present and loving father all the time. His drive to do better won't last unless it comes from deep inside him, and the only way that will happen is through therapy. He's taken a good first step, but unless he backs that up, he's going to falter after a few days. I feel like that's a bit unfair. Honestly, I feel like you don't know that for sure. That's some serious Reddit headcanon right there. Opie is literally in the post saying, he realizes that it was a mistake. He doesn't want to repeat the mistakes of his father. Opie is giving him a chance. Opie knows him better than us. Opie trusts him. The trust is being rebuilt here because he didn't go on the boys trip for a week. Sure, he can go to therapy if he wants to but it does sound like he wants to be a better person. I don't think it's the happiest ending that is possible, but I'd say that it's a step in the right direction, and it shows that he is willing to change, he is willing to put the work in. I would love to see his actions reflect that in the future. I do hope that OP holds him accountable, and they help each other towards being the best parents that they can be. Thank you for sharing your story with us, OP. Our next post is by user Throw RA Take Away Crab, titled I, 28 female, found out my husband, 29 male, has been telling his co workers that I'm his sister. What do I do? Please help. So, my husband, I'll call him Josh, and I have been together for six years, married for four, and we don't have kids. We have a really healthy and communicative relationship, we're both pretty easygoing, and I really love him. He started working at a large accounting firm about three years ago, and from what he tells me, he loves it there. He's made a lot of friends through his job, and he goes out with them for drinks and social events quite often, and I've been totally okay with that. I'm quite introverted, so I've never been interested in meeting his colleagues or work friends, nor have I asked to. I've got my own circle of friends, and I'm fine with us having separate friend groups. After what happened yesterday, it only just occurred to me that he's never actually asked me if I'd like to meet any of them, or go to one of his work events. I guess that is important context. Anyways, 
I'll start with what happened a few months ago, that I had brushed off until now. I was at a bar with some friends for a couple of Friday after work drinks, and a guy approached me. He was there with some friends too. He looked slightly familiar, but I hadn't met him before. He seemed friendly enough, and he asked me, OP, right? I think I might have just given him a confused look because he followed up with, I'm Jake, I work with Josh. I realized that I recognized him from some photos on my husband's phone. I don't use social media except for a private Instagram, so I'm not sure if he's posted the photos anywhere, but we've got a very trusting relationship, so I look in his photos sometimes. <laughs> don't hate me. This is where it gets a bit embarrassing. I'm a bit socially awkward, and so I struggled to end the conversation, but he just kept talking at me. I guess he was already a couple of beers deep, but while he was talking, he said something like, It's great that you guys are still so close. I haven't talked to my brother in ages. At the time, I was like, Huh? But I just assumed he was drunk and not making sense, so I ignored it. He started to get a little flirty, so I turned to my friends, and we left shortly after that. I didn't say anything to them about it, and it didn't seem like a big deal to me. I also decided not to tell my husband that I met his co-worker Jake. Not to hide it, but because I figured that the guy wouldn't even remember talking to me, and I didn't want to make it awkward for Josh at work by telling him his colleague tried to hit on me. I just thought, no harm, no foul. But yesterday morning, I was out walking our dog Monty. He's a cross between a few breeds and has very unique markings. This matters, I promise and was on my way to my regular cafe, which is in town. I was waiting in line to order, and the guy in front of me was an older man. He got his coffee and turned around, but stopped and looked at my dog and goes, Hello, Monty. Monty was super excited to see him, apparently, and so I guessed that the guy was another colleague of Josh's, because Josh brings the dog to the office a couple of times a week. I thought it was sweet, to be honest, so I smiled at him and said hi. He introduced himself, I guessed correctly that he was a colleague, but then he said something like, aren't you a good sister, walking his dog for him? I was so confused that I didn't even know how to react at first, so I stumbled on my words and just said, it's my dog. I regret it, but I genuinely couldn't bring myself to correct him and say that I'm Josh's wife and not his sister. It was just too awkward, and I just wanted to leave because I think it was suddenly dawning on me what might have been going on. He asked me something about sharing a dog, but I was able to escape the conversation by being in next in line to order my coffee, and he left. I seriously don't know what to do because what the fa? Do I even ask my husband about this? Part of me is just assuming or hoping that it's a mistake, that he doesn't talk about me that much at work, and they assume that we're related because we both have brown hair, but the thought that he's been telling his co-workers that I'm his sister, and evidently they have seen what I look like, so they must have seen photos, makes my stomach churn. I don't even know how I would broach the subject with him. I need some help. What would you guys do in this situation? I've only told one friend what happened, because it's so weird and embarrassing, and she has jumped straight to, time to plot his downfall, because she's my ride or die. <laughs> I love her. But I don't want to immediately assume the worst or ruin my marriage over something that could be nothing. I'm sorry for the long and rambly post, but I would really appreciate any and all advice. Additional information from OP. I didn't go into much detail about our relationship because it didn't seem relevant, but I meant it when I say that we've had the healthiest and best relationship that I've ever been in. I was friends with him for a year and a bit before we started dating, as we met at uni, and I've had shitty relationships before, and he truly blew me away when we started dating. He is genuinely the most empathetic, kind, and intelligent man that I have ever met. He remembers every little thing about me. He's so lovely to me every day, and does little acts of service just to make my day better. And I would do anything for him. We are both really supportive of each other. We also have a great sex life, we are intimate frequently, so I know he's not starved of it or anything. But that's why it's so hard for me to assume the worst, because literally just earlier tonight before he went out, he made dinner and told me that he loved me like he always does. Like it just doesn't seem possible or real for him to be living some double life, you know? I can't even imagine it. As I'm typing, it feels like I'm in a dream or talking about someone else. In the comments, 
Does he not wear a wedding ring to work? Why does he need to hide the fact that he's married? Sorry, OP, but this would send me into a tailspin. Find out as much as you can before confronting him. OP says, This is where I am right now. Tailspinning. Reading these comments and starting to think that I'm stupid because it seems so obvious from an outside perspective. But I know him so well that I'm just finding it so hard to fathom that he would even do something like this. I think that you are underreacting here. There is literally no good reason that he has told all his co-workers that you are his sister. I'm so sorry. You could choose to ask him why, or you could just leave. OP says, you're right. I think I was still in denial and hoping that it was all a mix-up when I posted this. I still am a little. My husband is out right now and I'm in bed and my head is spinning, but I think I'll talk to him tomorrow. Someone says that OP could surprise her husband at his job to give him a kiss in front of his colleagues, and OP says, I really, really wish I was the kind of person that could do this, but the thought of having everyone looking and judging and laughing is just too much for me to handle. I don't even know them, and the thought is making me dizzy. But I think meeting him at work could be a good idea, just to see how he reacts. I don't know if I can wait the whole weekend without talking to him about this. So, he's either having an affair at work or keeping his options open. Neither good. OP says, I'm starting to think you're right, but I still can't even wrap my head around that being possible. He's been just as present and loving as he always has. Nothing has changed. Back up to the post, there is an edit. Holy far. Thank you to everyone who commented with some advice. I haven't read all of them, but I really appreciate the suggestions from you guys. A small update, Josh came home at about 2.30am last night, but he was drunk so he just went straight to sleep. Which is fine by me because screw having this conversation in that state. I've just woken up, but he's still sleeping. First thing I want to clear up, I've seen a lot of people suggesting that I have crippling social anxiety or am severely introverted, which I suppose you could glean from the way that I explained what happened, but I'm not. I meant that I'm slightly introverted, in that I'm not the most eager to meet lots of new people at once, especially a bunch of finance bros whose weekend consists of unending sports bar beers, or I assume that I would be mansplained everything until my ears bleed. Which is probably a negative assumption, but I'm sure some of you know what I mean. I suppose that you could say that I'm confrontation-averse, in that I'm quite laid back and prefer to keep a conversation easy and positive. I don't know. I don't like it when things are awkward, and correcting when people misrecognize me is one of those things, but I'm not terrified of confrontation. Also, my husband and I do share some mutual friends. I didn't explain that well, but our lives are not entirely separate. The way he acts towards me around our mutual friends is extremely affectionate and normal. It is only his work friends that I have never interacted with. I've also seen some people suggest that what is going on is equivalent to my husband beating me and me hopelessly wondering whether I should break up with him, or that I'm stupid for thinking that my relationship was healthy when it clearly isn't. Like damn, cut me some slack, I'm a real person and this is an entirely alien and bizarre situation for me. My first reaction wasn't to assume the worst, but I do appreciate that you have all made me certain that it is a big deal. I guess I needed confirmation that the things that happened are enough proof that Josh has been purposefully lying and they weren't just mix-ups. I'm gonna talk to him today and ask him directly why he's telling his co-workers that I'm his sister. I follow the advice on writing my points down so that they don't get lost if I get emotional. I'll do my best not to let him slither out of it and I hope that he has some proof that his colleagues know that I'm his wife. I know that that's not the theatrical confrontation that you guys were hoping for, but it's a Saturday and I can't wait. Wish me luck, thank you all. Honestly, I don't really have too much else to add here but to say that I think, as I am a confrontation-averse person, I think that's a great idea, OP. Stick to your guns, have the bullet points there so that when the shakes start setting in, you can always ground yourself back to those points and think of something off the top of your head while your brain's attacking you. This seems like a really complex and weird situation. I can't even really think of an explanation as to why he would tell everyone that you're his sister if it doesn't involve him cheating on you with someone in the office or someone that the office knows. 
Like, that seems to be the only reason as to why he's doing this. Though I'd love to know what his explanation for this behaviour is. And now, on to the updates. Hi everyone, I just wanted to say thank you for your overwhelming amount of support and advice. I'm blown away, and it really means a lot, and has kept me grounded. I'm sorry for the slow updates, I know a lot of you were interested in what happened. I actually tried to update on Saturday, but it turns out this subreddit doesn't allow me to post an update until 48 hours after my first post. I'm also only allowed to post one single update, so I'll try to fit in as much as I can here. Sorry for how long that it might end up getting. I'll just get right into it. On Saturday morning, I woke up earlier than my husband. He was very hungover, so he was sleeping like a rock. But you guys will be proud of me, because I followed some advice and decided to look through his phone properly while he was sleeping. I have been on his phone so often, just pissing around on it, that I never thought to check anything very deeply. I know his passcode by heart. I checked all the expected things like Instagram DMs, Facebook Messenger, his iMessages, etc., and I didn't find anything to set off alarm bells to me. But I know from some comments that people who were cheating are good at covering their tracks and hiding messages, so I kept looking around. I saw that he had a folder called Work, and so I looked in there and he had a couple of Microsoft apps, Outlook, Authenticator, OneNote, etc., but he also had MS Teams. So I opened that up and had a look around. It did feel like I might have been breaking laws looking at his work messages, but I obviously had to. Anyways, I was already upset to see that he had a bunch of one-on-one -on -one chats with several female co-workers, which, at first glance, is obviously not an issue because everyone works with people of the opposite gender and are required to communicate with them, but a couple of them were vaguely flirty. Nothing that I would call egregious, but there would be the occasional message between them with some playful innuendo or a wink emoji. These upset me, obviously, and they did send me into a bit of a spiral. But I didn't find anything that suggested that he was having an out-and-out -out affair with any of them. Still, I followed someone's suggestion of screenshotting the messages, and I airdropped them to myself. I still wanted some evidence of the lie, though some proof of Josh telling someone that I was his sister directly. A commenter suggested that I go through his messages and search for keyword sister. I wanted to reply to your comment and say thank you for the idea, but the post was locked, so I couldn't, but thank you. So I searched for sis on his MS Teams, hoping to find results for both sister and sis. A bunch of messages from all hands group chats or one-on-one -on -one chats came up from other people, all unrelated and about their own sisters or whatever. But my heart dropped out my ass when I saw that there was a direct message from Jake, the guy from the bar, to Josh from Monday a few months ago. Jake's message said, Ran into your sister at the bar on Friday. She's single, right? And my husband had the freaking gall to reply, Nah, she's married. I literally almost burst into flames on the spot when I saw that. I can't even describe how much I was shaking after reading those messages. Firstly, that I could have confronted Josh about this months ago. I was, and still am, so furious with myself for that. Josh would have been effing praying that I didn't remember seeing Jake, or that I wouldn't mention it, and he would have been counting his lucky stars that I never did. He probably thought he was hot shit for getting away with that, and I nearly burnt a hole through the floor thinking about it. But secondly, I was just in shock that he had the balls to tell this guy that I'm the one who was married, because he doesn't want anyone having it on with me, but he is allowed to coyly flirt with every frickin' woman in the office? Anyways, I kept going back through the search results on his MS Teams, and eventually I got as far back as two-ish years ago and I did in fact find a message from Josh himself to a group chat. It said, me and sis in Noosa Dua. I clicked on that and saw that he had sent it alongside a bunch of photos of him and I from our holiday to Bali. We went to Bali for our second anniversary. I thought he probably chose those photos because he's shirtless and had been working out, so he looked hot in all of them. I was in tears seeing all of this obviously. I took screenshots of those too, and airdropped all of the screenshots to myself. Needless to say, I was devastated, and still am, to see all of that. I'm still struggling to even process it all, but that all happened on Saturday morning, and I immediately took myself to my friend's house, I'll call her Sophie. 
I went to her place to cry it out and show her what I found, and she was extremely positive and probably more furious than me. At around 1.30pm, I get a phone call from Josh and I hung it up immediately. He sent a few messages along the lines of, Where are you baby? I'm ordering food, want some? Sad to not wake up next to you this morning, sad face. Guys, I have to reiterate how much I loved this man, and how effing heart-wrenching it was to see him acting like nothing had gone wrong. It took so much willpower to just pretend that none of it had ever happened and go home to him. I know a lot of you will yell at me or accuse me of being terrified of confronting him about this, which is not true, please have some empathy. It takes time to process my emotions, and I wouldn't have been able to form a sentence if I tried to confront him immediately after seeing those messages. I needed some time away with Sophie to recollect myself, and so I stayed the night at her place. She ordered us Chinese, and she helped me plan how I would confront him. I got a bunch more texts and calls from him as the evening progressed, and I eventually put my phone on Do Not Disturb. Sunday morning, I woke up feeling more angry than sad, so I opened my phone and finally replied to his messages. Coming home now, need to talk. I kept it cryptic to make him squirm to be honest. Because I was and am fraught with emotions, I can't remember the entire conversation word for word, but I'll try to replay it as best I can. Long story short, I got home and he tried to hug me, but I refused him, and we just stood in the kitchen. I did confront him like someone suggested. I just said, why have you been telling your co-workers that I'm your sister? I wish it would have been a movie scene where the colour drained from his face or he immediately looked like a deer in the headlights, but he didn't. It was like he had been grinding himself for this conversation for a while because he just frowned at me and looked flabbergasted. He just said, huh? This makes me so angry. How are you going to pretend to be so stupid after three years of lying? I basically said, don't play effing dumb. Two of your co-workers have greeted me as your sister, and I have proof of you telling them, and I know that you're pretending to be single. Essentially, I asked him what he had to say for himself. He still played stupid. He became moderately defensive and just kept saying, I don't know what you're talking about, or why would I lie about you? I cannot describe how furious I was at this point, but I was in tears. I always cry when I'm angry, so he was trying to comfort me as if I was having some kind of irrational breakdown. I showed him the screenshot of his message, saying, me and sis, and I said something like, you tell me. He just said, I don't know what I'm looking at, and I'm confused. I got so angry that I left again and went back to Sophie's because it felt like a dead-end road. I didn't think that I was going to get him to admit to anything, and I was just getting so furious that I couldn't continue. He was really upset and in tears, which to me was evidence that he knew that he was lying and that he was going to have to come up with some explanation. He tried to get me to stay, but I told them that until you have something to say for yourself, we've got nothing to talk about. At like 8.30ish, he called me again and I did pick up. He basically asked for us to talk and he said that he had some things to say. So I went back to our apartment. He had written out a bunch of stuff on a piece of paper as if he had prepared a speech and sat me down on the couch. He asked me not to say anything while he was explaining himself. I'll write down the gist of what he said in bullet points. He started apologizing relentlessly and admitting that he pretended to be stupid before because he couldn't immediately think of something to say for himself. He said that immediately after he started at his job, he realized the atmosphere was like a frat house. All of his team members were men in their 20s and 30s that were single and F-boys. His word. He noticed that the one guy in their team that was married would either get picked on or essentially excluded from any and all social interactions. That included getting lunch, inside jokes, going out on Friday, etc. These guys were friendly and welcoming to Josh, and he admitted that he was desperate to fit in with them. He hated feeling like fresh meat. So he was scared that saying he was married would alienate him from his co-workers, and at first just never mentioned that he was married. He said he did wear his wedding ring, and they had just never pointed it out. A few months in, they were all out drinking after work. He admitted that after one of his workmates saw pictures of him and I on his lock screen, they asked him who I was, and in a moment of panic he said, my sister. 
He was really apologetic at this point, and he was crying a lot. He couldn't even look at me, and he was just reading what he had written down. Anyway, he said that from then, he basically dug himself a deeper and deeper grave, because they kept grilling him about me and wanting to see more pictures of me. He said he had let it go on too long, and that he didn't have the balls to admit to the lie. They would always bring me up and ask shit like, did you give her my number yet? Or joke that they had slept with me, etc. So when he got the message from Jake, he essentially thought that it was just him taking the piss, but he didn't like the jokes they were making about me, and said that I was married in hopes that they would stop. They didn't. He said that this wasn't the first time that he told them I was married. In fact, he had said so pretty much immediately after saying I was his sister. He said that those pictures of us in Noosa Dua were the only pictures that he had purposely sent them and deliberately lied about, after what he called an endless barrage of pestering from his colleagues to share pics from his holiday. He said he was really ashamed that he did that. He told me that he had never had an affair, or even considered it, that the messages between him and his female colleagues were banter, and that it was commonplace to talk to people like that in the office. He also says he knows how disgusting it is, and he's embarrassed to have been acting like an F-boy. Again, his word. He concluded his speech by apologizing again, and said that he was disgusted with himself and ashamed that he had lied for so long, but felt like he had trapped himself and that he couldn't find a way to get himself out of it. He said he knows that he could have confessed the truth to either of his co-workers or me at any point, but that he didn't because he was a coward. He said that he'll confess to his entire office that he lied and that I am his wife and not his sister, if I want him to. He said that he'll quit his job without a word if it would make me feel better, and that he hopes that I can forgive him, but he understands if I can't. Anyway, I couldn't really think of anything to say at that point. He went to lock himself in the bathroom, and I just sat on the couch crying. I still don't know if I can trust what he said, and a lie that extreme is just baffling to me. If he can lie like that for so long, what else could he be lying about? But his explanation and apologies seemed so sincere and genuine, and I guess to an extent, what he said is believable. He's always been extroverted, but very susceptible to peer pressure, especially from other blokes. If nothing else to me, it's a sign of shocking immaturity. Anyways, I packed up a bag and went back to Sophie's. I'm still at her place as I'm writing this. She said that I can stay as long as I need to. I told Josh that I needed time away from him to think about everything and whether or not I believe him or whether I can ever trust him again. He told me to take as long as I needed and that he'll still be there if or when I get back, he said, even if it takes a year. Right now, nothing feels real. I'm still dealing with the emotional whiplash from all of this, and I can't keep food down or think about anything. I've taken the day off work, and Josh told me that he's going to take off the whole week. Sophie and my other friends have told me not to make a decision on anything until my head is clear. I spoke to my parents this morning, and my mum said that it's just a bump in the road. But she and my dad adore Josh, so they're pretty biased. That's where I am right now. I'll take some time before I consider my next steps. I can't say whether I'm leaning towards forgiveness or divorce, but those are really the only options. I kind of feel lost in a void at the moment. That's probably the best way to describe it. Just emptiness. Thanks again for all of your advice and support. I'm truly so grateful, and having this place to write down all of my thoughts has been helpful to get my mind a little clearer. This will be my last update. Unless I make an edit to clear things up, all the best. In the comments, just passing through 63 says, Call Jake and start a conversation, then ask him if your brother is popular with the ladies. 100%. Have a chat and ask more specifically what he thinks of that girl that her brother has been interested in, and see Jake say, You mean Megan in accounting? Or something similar. And if Jake says anything about OP being married, say, I was, but not for much longer, and see how fast it gets back to her brother. OP on if her husband wears his wedding ring when he's out with his colleagues, and if they noticed anything different about her husband. OP says, he said he hasn't taken off his ring and that people had pointed it out before, but he just managed to weasel his way out of explaining it. But he said people almost never noticed it. I struggle to believe that, but I don't know. That's how I feel too. 
From what he said, it sounded like it went unacknowledged because he never tried anything on with other women. But that's giving him a lot of grace, more grace than I'm willing to give him right now anyway. Having worked in the finance industry for years, 43 female, there is definitely a more clicky vibe than in some other industries. Being single and partying hard off hours is expected as you're coming up the ranks and you definitely get picked on, singled out, and or passed over in favor of yes men and company men if you don't comply. That being said, your husband has no backbone. It takes an individual with a strong sense of self to march to the beat of their own drum when everyone else is doing something different. His inability to even admit that he was in a committed relationship is like foreshadowing how he will be when times get tough, and they will get tough if you stay together. My recommendation is that he attends therapy on his own, and you attend couples counseling together with a different therapist, but only if you want to do so. OP replies, this is really helpful to know. Thank you. I don't work in finance, I work for a small creative company, so I have no clue about workplace culture in other industries. But yeah, I'm pretty horrified that he was that weak-willed under the pressure of random men. If I can ever bring myself to forgive him, I would definitely force him to attend counseling. I knew that he was easily peer pressured, but not to this extent. I'm so sorry that you're going through this. What an absolute gut punch. When I read your first post, I was thinking that there was a very good chance that he didn't want to tell anyone he was married for this exact reason. It seems that fitting in and being liked by a bunch of frat bros was more important to him than honoring your marriage. Why does he care so much about going out and getting drunk with these dipshits? Shouldn't he be moving past that mentality? I suggest marriage counseling. He needs to figure out what drove him to live this life for three years. And I'm curious, how often does he come home drunk as he did? OP replies, he would often go for after work drinks on Fridays. That's pretty standard where we live, so do I, but I should say that he doesn't regularly go out that late or get that drunk. Last Friday, it was a special occasion because it was his friend's birthday, but this friend wasn't one of his work friends. I knew the guys that he was out with. Anyway guys, that's where I'm going to end today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.